we're going to get started. I just want to welcome everyone to the Rotary Club Centennial Celebration. I want to thank you all for coming and celebrating with us. My name is Brian Willett, I'm the current president of Rotary. Earlier in the year, we realized that 2024 is the 100th uh, year of Rotary Club. We put together a committee and a celebration, and this is it. So tonight, we have great food, awesome raffles, a great cover band, three floors up, and some great people to celebrate with. With us tonight, we have, uh, the mayor was planning to be here, but he, he's in uh, budget meetings, so we have Samantha Stone uh, from the mayor's office. We have um, Richard Hegarty from uh, the state. We also have uh, the district governor of Rotary, uh, Laurie Karras, the assistant district governor, uh, Marty Walsh, and we also have Tom Hanker and Steve Villagotis from uh, the Bell Island. Uh, also, we have um, uh, Paul Pachensky, president of the Winchester Club. Um, we'll now start the celebration like we start every Rotary meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. So if everyone can please stand and face the flag. I pledge allegiance. Thank you, Brian. You have a great first day. Um, I just want to say um, we really appreciate the invitation to sing at this important event. And in a world where change seems to be what is happening, everything seems to be changing, it is heartening to know that there are organizations like this that have been around for a long time and hopefully will continue to be around that help the community. So thank you for the invitation.
donates $12,000 annually for Hoover and Dollars for Scholars, organizes Student Government Day and hosts the Student Government Day Luncheon, also hosting breakfast with seniors twice a year at the Hoover and Senior Center, and donated a defibrillator to an organization in need of receiving one. The City of Woolward is so grateful to have such a wonderful and thoughtful group of Rotary members who continuously give back to our community, and I'm adding, in many new ways in the course of the 100 years. Now therefore, on behalf of Michael P. Cannon, Mayor of the City of Woolward, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, by virtue of the authority vested in him, I ask that all residents Join me in honoring and celebrating the Rotary Club of Woodward as it marks its 100th anniversary.
The raffles are going to be open until 8.30, and then we're going to close it off, and we're going to pull the raffles at 9 o'clock. Unfortunately, you have to be here to win because we don't have your names, we just have a number. So there is still time to, to get raffles and uh, get your names in. There's also a 50-50 raffle that right now is up to $450, so we're splitting that up. Hopefully we can get that over 500 so something with uh, 250 I had a short speech uh, prepared, uh, but Laurie Karras and Samantha Stone basically uh, said everything that I was going to say about the work.
first three meetings of the Winchester Club, April 12, 18, and 28, 1927, were held with the Rubin Club at Glendale Farms at Rubin Four Corners. Rubin sponsored Winchester and supported their bid for a Rotary Charter. The Rubin Club presented us with our bell at a charter dinner June 1, 1927 at the Winchester Town Hall. Through the years, Rotary law has it that the bells of each club mysteriously would disappear and then miraculously reappear. In some instances, a ransom was sought for its return. Just another form of fundraising. After the war years, the winning home farm in Wood became a favorite charity for the Winchester Club. Rotary's involvement involvement with the farm was one of immense proportions. The 90-acre tract that lies in Lubin, Lexington, and Winchester comprised the site. The Lubin Club was invited by Winchester to partner with some of the improvements, and Lubin did not hesitate to join. The District Softball League of the 70s and 80s was a remarkable opportunity to explore the third tenet of our four-way test. Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Those dozen years gave Winchester and Rubin Rotarians the opportunity to make friendships that had lasted almost 50 years. The games and rivalry were fun, were fun but while he didn't remember the scores, he did remember the post-game tradition of a few drinks, some pizza, and small talk that solidified their friendships. Our clubs have had a close relationship for 97 years. One Rotarian from the Wind, Jim McGrath, appeared almost weekly as a visitor. In November 1928, the club instructed Sergeant of Arms not to let him pay for lunch hereafter because he served as the pianist for the meetings. The Winchester Club looks forward to many more years of fellowship and camaraderie with the Rubin Club. Congratulations on celebrating your 100th year of service. Congratulations. say that uh, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. I'm the oldest Rotary present on this side of the grass, so it's a great <laughs> honor for me to be here. I joined the club back in 1975, and my father was a lion. And I used to meet at night, and I remember he never came home until long after I was in bed. So at that, at that time when I was asked, my wife and I were living in Linfield. Susan, sitting over there, uh, wanted me to come home to see the little, little kids when they went to bed. So I joined the, I was invited to join the Rotary Club, and that was one of my greatest uh, enjoyments in life. All the wonderful social service things that the Rotary has done have been mentioned here tonight. And, uh, but I, I became program chairman shortly after I joined the club, and I, and I just dug down deep, and we had some great programs and ambassadors and everything, but I think the, the biggest draw we ever had was I was able to get Senator Billy Bulger to come to Rubin to speak. His brother was on the land, so we won't talk about that. But I even got him to sing. So that one was a great, we had that on a holiday in, and I think we had about 250 people that uh, time to come to that. But uh, I had a lot of fun, and when I uh, became president, uh, I had to tell a story every week, and uh, I got fined anyways, but I just, here tonight, it reminds me of one story that happened this past winter down in Florida. 
and uh, have a, we live in a golf community, and I usually play th three or four times a week, and the four times I play with my wife on Sundays. But anyways, there was a, I go to the Starter Shack, and the Starter says to me, Mr. Levine, there's a new member over there, uh, Paul Davis, uh, do you mind if he joins your threesome? So I said, sure. So he comes in, and Paul jumps in the car with me, and we go out and play, and uh, he's a pretty good player. He shoots lights out. So I said to him, gee, you want to play with us again next Monday? I got the same time, I know me. He says, well, I'll, I'll, I'll be there, but if I don't show up, I'll be a half hour later. I said, well, I think I'm okay. So now next week he comes, he gets there, and this time he's playing left-handed. Last week he played right-handed. So I says to him, what, what's the story? This week you played left-handed, last week you played right-handed. So he says to me, well, if my wife gets up and she's laying on her left side, I play left-handed. If she's laying on her right side, I play right-handed. And so I said to him, what if she's on her back? He says, that's why I'd be a half hour later. <laughs> Take it out! 